Hey guys, and welcome back to another video on Lumber Capital Log Yard. Today we took a little field trip to Misty Mountain Farm. You are going to get the chance to meet and hear from Mr. Albert, the man behind this whole operation, as well as get a chance to hopefully look around. I have a few questions for him today, so let's go say hi and get right to it. Nice to see you again, Mr. Albert. Good to see you. So we are here today at Misty Mountain Farms because a lot of you enjoy the grilling episodes and this is our local source of proteins that is going to be supplying us with meat for these grilling episodes in the coming future. So let's, we're here to talk a little bit about the farm and I have a few questions for you. If Sounds you don't good. Mind. Yeah. Uh, so you mind just getting right into it? Yeah. All right, uh, first question is, what made you decide to become a farmer? So to answer that, Emerald, uh, our family's been farming this particular property since 1854, and I think I was born into it. Um, I'm 61, born 1962, January 62, and uh, from the time I was little, I was here on this property helping my father farm and so I think I was born into it and uh, at the end of the day uh, it's in my DNA. Yeah. My next question is what makes your farm different from others like it? Because I'm sure this place I've already heard a little bit about it and it seems like a pretty special place but our audience doesn't know that yet so if you just elaborate a little bit to them sure. what makes your farm you know, unique. So, as we already mentioned, the idea behind it being a sixth generation farm that has survived a lot of challenges over the years to continue to bring high quality food products to the market. Um, I think at the end of the day, uh, what makes it unique is the idea that since the early going, we have provided a red meat protein source to our community in the greater Williamsport area, beginning with my great, great grandfather who stood the curbstone market 50 years straight. And so my wife and I began Misty Mountain Farm in the year 2000, and we uh, continued on that tradition. Uh, it skipped a couple generations, but we continued on that tradition uh, reinvigorating the idea that uh, the best source of protein is grown locally. Absolutely. I mean, I can't agree with that more. So many baby cows. How many cows are there? So in this particular herd of cows, there's about 18 mamas. And we like to have 18 to 20 mama cows in our group. We have multiple groups at multiple different farms. All right, well, um, going back to the more serious questions, uh, did COVID pose any obstacles uh, for your business when that happened? I mean, I know we're kind of over it, hopefully, but uh, yeah. lots of stories. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, COVID actually was uh, became a tipping point for our, our business in the idea that once folks realized that there was a shortage in the supply chain for uh, uh, beef and lamb and, and poultry in general that uh, at the end of the day they realized that local served the purpose. Yeah. And uh, so we were fortunately booked in processing dates for two years in advance of COVID beginning in 2019. And fortunately we had the supply chain to continue to meet demand. and. We actually, in 2020, uh, grew the company by 100%. We oh, doubled wow. our sales That's in 2020. That's significant. It is. And so COVID was a tipping point for us, personally, in a good way. Yeah. 
I mean, I know that we had lots of orders when COVID happened and we just like, it was kind of hectic because we didn't have uh, enough place to really like put all of the lumber that we had to cut. Oh my. So there was a little bit of a jam up, but like in a way it was positive, even though it ended up being kind of crazy. Um, it was, it was pretty positive for us as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Well, that leads me into my wrap-up question. Sure. Which, what is your vision for the farm in the future? So, being a sixth-generation farm, there are moments in time when you lose the idea that you can expand or grow it. And even though we've been on the same property this entire time, we have made significant endeavors to work with the cattle in a way that, that fits nature. Yeah to be able to bring about a high quality and experience to our customer base, which we so appreciate, and uh, to be able to be environmentally concerned about what we're doing. So there's uh, uh, the combination of those things are a continuous effort to improve. And I yeah. think that that is something that kind of ties into another question that I asked earlier is like, what separates you from other farms? is that not everyone is, especially farms, are as concerned with that aspect of it as you seem to be. And I think that that is really important. I mean, everyone knows on the channel that we are really concerned with our zero waste strategy right, and just making that. sure that everything goes to use. And looks like you have something pretty similar going on here, except in your own way, of course. Yeah, absolutely, Emerald. So. Uh, to tie that all together, we think of the fact that we're, we're converting air, sunshine, and water into a red meat protein that is uh, nutrient dense. And so we're bringing about wellness to the community. Um, our customer base supports us loyally, which we're so appreciative of. And uh, uh, the environment combination with the grazing of the cattle, the production model that we have for for all of our livestock because we run sheep and poultry besides. Well, yeah. so, yeah. well um, this is something that I think a lot of farms miss and you seem to hit the nail on the head with it. Appreciate um, that. So, yeah, we look forward to having your meat on our tables and getting That's to awesome. munch on it because like you said, it has a lot more nutrients than most meat and that is just something that a lot of meat just doesn't have. We're constantly concerned with the quality of yeah. our meat and I think that having good quality local meat is one of the best things that you can do for your health and we're very concerned with our health because what else is there to be concerned about? So anyhow, I think that that wraps it up. Um, thanks for thanks coming. For, yeah, thanks for taking our time to answer the questions. And uh, we'll, of course, get back up here sometime again uh, in the future. So Sounds thank good. you. Thank you. If you're interested in checking out his Facebook page, I'll leave a link down in the description below. Anyways, that's it for today's video, everyone. If you enjoyed, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But other than that, we'll see you back here next time. Bye.